My name is Desmond Washington, and y'all are tuned in to another episode of Young Black Equestrians. I am. I am. I am. I am a young. I am a young. I am a young. I am. And I am a young. Black. A young black. Young black. A young black. Black. Black equestrian. 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 Black equestrian. Equestrian. Black equestrian. I'm a young black equestrian. I am a young black equestrian. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Young Black Equestrians with your hosts, Ariana Johnson and Caitlin Gooch. Today, we have Desmond Washington here with us, who is affectionately known as african empire on all social platforms and we have been looking forward to talking to her what it's like two weeks now since we booked it so i'm (laughs) super excited that you are here with us today i feel like we're gonna have a lot of fun so welcome to the show how y'all doing hey (laughs) (laughs) well i'm excited if you can't tell (laughs) Yes, yes. So I need you to, I need you to just bring us back, bring us back to the very beginning. Tell us about yourself, where you're located, and what you do. Well, y'all, my name is Desmond Washington. I'm from Stanislaus County, California. And to be honest, I just play with horses all day. (laughs) That's really all I do. Um, I don't really have a discipline, so to speak. I think the closest you can probably hit me to is probably ranching. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't do anything, so to speak. I just hang out and have fun with them. So I see a lot of different animals in your videos. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Is this family horses? Like, is this like what? I need, I need you to give us a rundown. All right. So, um, I'm about 15 minutes away from my grandparents, that whole ranch that everybody sees. That's my grandparents. People get confused that I live there. People get even more confused when I tell them I don't even own the horses, but I just about own everything else that's there. (laughs) Um, it's my grandpa. He was, uh, he used to show Shetland ponies. He used to show Arabians back in the fifties. And now he's, a retired team roper so he has all his old team roping horses there he has horses for me um last year I actually was starting a it was kind of like a petting zoo kids education farm education hybrid thing but COVID hit right when I got started so I just shut it down immediately Uh but I just have a whole it used to be a whole plethora of just random animals that I have acquired and just took them on random adventures that people just don't (laughs) deal with anymore yeah yeah so what do you do like are you in school right now I am I am in school full-time I um, currently work as a veterinary technician at a equine hospital down the street from me which is very few and in between like I just found out that they existed maybe (sighs) August (laughs) never heard of them in my life and um but no I am in school full-time I'm getting um one of my little degrees in veterinary technician work and I need to I need to stop you because ain't no such thing as little degrees out here we don't use that kind of terminology (laughs) degrees okay right yep one degree warmer at a time (laughs) oh man y'all sound like my emoji counselor (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so what when did you develop this passion for animals well um like I told y'all it was my grandpa mm-hmm. and I was technically the first grandchild so I was the first baby there are literal pictures of me probably a couple months old on top of a horse just wow. hanging out having a great time and I'm actually the only grandkid that took on animals at all even though we all live in the same area, 15 minutes away, spend as much time, I'm the only one. 
I don't know, something, I think he just really took me to a lot of like trail rides, took me a lot of those team roping events. And it grew from pretty much just, you know, oh, I enjoy horses, but I have a passion for something else to being, I really love horses. This horse girl phase did not go Mm -hmm. whatsoever. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it never leaves. (laughs) No. (laughs) And Caitlin's the same way. She's the the only child of her family that's gotten in or stuck with being with horses. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Shoot. It's so funny, though, because like you said, even though, you know, you're kind of like grew up the same and in the same area, it's like, why? You wasn't born with that gene? Like, what happened? <laughs> Can't even talk to him about it. Nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Shoot. what is... What is uh, one of the biggest challenges you faced kind of in dealing with the horses that you have? Because I know that you get a lot of them that may be unwanted. Uh, In that regards, I'm actually just a really, I love ponies. They are my favorite thing. My first personal horse was a Shetland pony. And as y'all probably noticed that my little mini Twilight is my love of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, mostly I'm just kind of going around telling people how, even though like someone might say, oh, I'm doing the best for my pony, so to speak. Um, it'd be like, she gets lots of treats and she's so fat. I just kind of go over and just tell people like, you know, I know you say you love them, but sometimes what you're doing isn't the best. And then there's people who treat them as like throwaways, like, oh, it doesn't matter. They're fine. Like, um, even though I just said my grandpa showed Shetland ponies. Um, When I was a kid, when I had Twilight, I think I got her around fourth grade. It was always like, oh, she doesn't need um, to get ferried this time. She's all right. When she's the one that has like the longest feet every single time, her feet grow the fastest. So it was really just saying like, I always go over people like, they're not um, throwaways. You can't just keep feeding them, like overfeeding them, saying that it's just love. And then there's people who are saying that they're the devil. It's like, you left them out in the pasture. And they're doing absolutely nothing. I don't have a problem with pasture pets, but you can't call it like this evil creature. And it's like, you don't even treat it like an actual horse. You mm-hmm. just over there. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. yeah. That so, is what I tell people when they're like, oh my gosh, you know, all of the minis that I've ever known are, have been so bad. And it's like, that's because people treat them like stuffed animals and yes no like my mini got desensitized just like my big horse you know we yes. the same if he bites me I'm a thump him like it's <laughs> it's the same kind of situation it's amazing because like I bet people probably tell you the same way is like oh my gosh you got one of the good ones and it's like <laughs> wow so I'm one of the few people that actually care enough right. to treat them like an animal well right like a horse Right, right, yeah. I mean, some of our minis get treated much better than. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A lot of horses, maybe some people. Uh, But that's okay, but that's okay. Um, What is a a common misconception that you run into, whether it be with the animals that you have now or even on the job since you are, uh, vet tech. Ooh, I've been waiting for this one. So <laughs> um, it's actually something that has happened very recently, although I'm just kind of seeing a pattern that's happening over and over. So I'm kind of like a social media person, you know, I'm always messing around, dancing around my animals, getting them into things. And one of the things that I've noticed is that people are always telling me like, oh, you're Y and Z. Oh, you're not a real cowgirl because you don't dress this way. You don't act this way. I'm just like, okay, and? Like, um, there are people like really fighting me over this. They're like, oh, you're not a real cowgirl because you, I remember you saying that you don't even know how to fix a fence or you don't know how to, you choose not to rope cows when you're, um, processing cattle I call it processing it's branding I'm just like okay and I'm around cows I'm driving them I help drive them 
I don't rope them because I have an athletic career. First of all, I like to keep my fingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and two, I honestly have more fun just kind of hitting them with their injections. Who cares if I don't know how to fix the fence? No one even asks me if I want to learn how. Mm. But really, it's just a lot of people just telling me, oh, you cannot possibly be this because you're not like this. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's never like I don't outright say, oh, I'm a cowgirl, but you know, we can just kind of assume because there's footage of me working with cows, like I am that. And then someone's just like, no, you can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's really fit and mold stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you feel like the this day and age, like with social media and, you know, the representation of cowgirls and people are people of color on horses anyway, or like in any form, how do you feel like that has been changing um, over the past couple years and kind of since you've been on socials? I'm actually really happy about how much it grew because um, y'all, I'm actually, I can honestly say 98% confidence. I am the only Black cowboy equestrian around me especially in my county and the surrounding counties I am probably the only one and it's just like um it's just amazing because to be honest when I grew up I was the only one I was always the only one it's a lot of white people around I mean my grandpa's white so it was always like his friends and I used to think just off top, not even just black equestrians in general, but black cowboys, I thought it was a dying thing. Because if you even type in black cowboy, um, back then, I don't know now, I haven't done it recently, probably mm -hmm. changed, mm -hmm. but it was always like a picture of an old man. It was always a picture of an old man. I'm just like, wow, I'm probably the only one. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Old Town Road came out and all of a sudden everyone started popping out. And I was just like, oh my gosh, there are people who are like me, there are people who aren't like, you know, pushing 80, there's people that are my age. Cause y'all, I don't think y'all understand. Um, I didn't meet my first black equestrian, like physically met, talked, interacted with a black equestrian until it was my 21st birthday. When I went to a um, BLM protest in Oakland that was brought on by um, Brianna Noble. That was the first time, my 21st birthday. And they were at a, all of them were at a protest at a, in Oakland, which is like an hour and a half away from me. I had no idea, no sense of the form. It was just amazing. So I am extremely glad that one, there's a lot more people that I've met, I've gotten to know. I've started to see people more in the limelight. I think, um, oh, what's her not, um, She was on an ad for like Chica. I think it was for the Grammys. I don't no. watch award shows, but I saw her. Yes. Chanel. Like, mm -hmm. There she goes. And then there was someone else that was our, for Walmart. I was like, wow, we're yeah. everywhere. And I wouldn't have known. I yeah. grew up thinking, I'm it. This is it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that is really cool because a lot of times when we interview people, um the the stories are so different. And I feel like it's a good thing to point out. Like, you know, me and Caitlin say we grew up around black horsemen I'm and jealous. women. <laughs> and <laughs> And so when we, you know, do these, you know, these interviews and things like that, comparing experiences and sharing the fact that not everybody's is the same is so important, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's not even to say that, you know, if you didn't grow up around um, black cowboys, cowboys, cowgirls, your experiences are better or worse. It's just, it's it's different it's different mm -hmm. and um we all have like lessons that we can appreciate from each other because of that mm -hmm. oh so, for sure uh, 
<laughs> what do you what do you see for the future of Desmond? Well, I hope I can get that stupid petting zoo up. Now I'm playing. Um, <laughs> really, just what I want to do is just see people not only just kind of be more open to things, but this is just kind of something that we hadn't talked about. I just want to see more people be open about different ways of taking care of not even just horses, but their animals. Like I want to see more um, push for like, um, what's it called? Let's see, I can't remember. It is being more mindful about the horse's mind. Cause there's a lot of new studies coming out. Like um, the impact of like R plus training is coming right now. Um, how horses can deal with stress. There's like silent um, signs of stress in horses that people like, you know, kind of choose to ignore. Mm -hmm. I just want people to just be able to take these studies and not make it seem like they should be the evil person. Cause I think what happens is that when these studies happen, that the um people are like oh I used to do this for my horse and you guys are pinning me as this bad guy well guess what it's been working for me it's obviously you know the horse is fine or whatever so I'm just not going to change I just want people to be more open to just changing their stuff up and not to think oh I'm being painted as the bad guy it's more like oh I was taught it was more like this but now that there's a new study out maybe I can try and change my habits that's really all I want Right, right. It's like, uh, I saw something on Twitter. It was like, normalize um, changing your mind when presented with new information. Yes. Like, definitely. Okay. I was, I was almost going to say, hold on, I'm going to have to run out, but I heard a name. So I, I just have anxiety <laughs> now when I can't see out the window. Anyway. I but yeah. Normalizing, huh? I was going to say, I agree with that. Um, yeah. normalizing things when you're presented with new information because I mean you know what you know and then when you figure out something that you didn't know it doesn't mean like you know like you were stupid the whole time for not knowing right. but if you continue <laughs> knowing right. Yeah. Information, right. Right. <laughs> right. you can't you can't claim ignorance after that that's the choice right exactly right. So I feel like as somebody with a veterinary background, um, I have always been in this position, like trying to be a know-it-all, trying to like, just, you know, yeah, no, I tell, <laughs> tell people what to do. And it's like, no, like, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to, and, and that's the other thing, being a know-it-all and doing it like the white people do it. And it's like, you know, it's just, it's just kind of right. It has nothing to do yeah. with who does it, you know, but getting Coggins done is generally a good idea. It's yeah. Not, it's not because of white people. It's because of disease. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to uh, veterinary medicine, what is your favorite part of working as a vet tech? Ooh. Well, I just, I actually started working last August at um, the equine facility. Otherwise I was at a small animal facility that I hated. Um, but I think the best part is being able to learn a little bit more about the equestrian community around me because, um, the town I'm from, it's not really an equestrian community versus a town where most of our clients are, which is also 15 minutes away, is like, they deem themselves like the cowboy capital. But I don't go over there because the certain things that they think about me are not very great. And so I usually tend to avoid them. But so far, just having them coming into the clinic, I'm like, wow, this isn't just a you know, just a quarter horse town, so to speak. They got Frisians out here. They've got their halflingers. They have their Arabians. Cause I honestly thought there was probably like 12 quarter horse people around and they were all team ropers. I really had no idea. So not only seeing black cowboys and stuff blew my mind, but also going to this job. I'm like, wow, there's not like 12 
70 year old men plus me out here like that's amazing so really even though I love you know veterinary medicine and stuff the most favorable part of my job is being able to see what kind of equestrians are around me because I was literally shut out of that not only was like you know I was a kid and I couldn't go over to places but I was really just left on that farm I didn't go to no no competitions I don't compete you didn't watch shows or anything I was kept on that farm Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then hauled up to the hills and that was it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I um I saw for our question when we said what is one thing you wish you knew before you know getting into the industry your answer was how showing worked so would you um what kind of showing would you want to do I am oh man ever since the sixth grade I've wanted to show miniature horses so freaking bad and I still do (laughs) I was it I think I was more interested in like halter minis because I think that was like the most common thing but I want to I want to get active I think I want to start jumping minis now (laughs) I'm gonna start running around with them (laughs) yeah yeah. I wanted to get into it (laughs) you should do it ain't nothing stopping you (laughs) the old man (laughs) you know what shake it up a little bit um (laughs) <laughs> and then to it but to do it. it so so you are 21 now yep you should you should apply for the OES scholarship I saw that I did I'm wor- I'm thinking of, I was like I was thinking about it I'm one of those people who was like huh there's people in worse situations than me. I mean, I literally buy animals and dump them at my grandpa's without asking. So I think there's people that are, you know, a little bit more deserving. (laughs) Sound like to me, you need a scholarship. (laughs) Just to buy more. (laughs) (laughs) But I am going to hop on a soapbox for a second just because of something that you said. Go for it. Um, there are definitely going to be people that are worse off than if you just looking at your life and be like, yeah, there's someone else that is worse. But as Black women in not only just this world, but in an industry where there is not a lot of us, ma'am, apply for things get these people's monies and um show off with that like that Mm -hmm. is that is the the tagline for you know life at this point like I just applied for financial aid for this google program and they were like why do you need it and I was like because I'm a black woman and not a lot of black (laughs) women are doing this period that's why Y'all, you know, are talking about diversity and inclusion. I'm diverse, so include me. Period. And I got it. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. So it's like, you don't get, my sister told me, you don't get a cookie at the end of the day for struggling. Not saying that you're struggling, but Mm. for not applying for these opportunities, you don't get cookies for that. You get cookies when you get them. So for anybody watching this apply for the thing get the monies that's it that's my soapbox you hear her spitting (laughs) (laughs) I know you did (laughs) oh my goodness that is so funny so what advice would you give people who aspire to be equestrians and be around horses Y'all, y'all don't need to fit no mold whatsoever. Every day I get told I'm something that I'm not. And then I do the thing that they told me that I'm not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I don't need, you don't need to wear, you know, the typical fashion. You don't need to talk a certain way, do the certain things. If you're literally just doing what you're doing, like I be wearing my little rainbow wig 
I ride in dresses sometimes, which is not always a good idea, but I do it. I don't, I only have one pair of Wranglers and I'm supposed to be this Western girl, even though, let's be real, you gotta be safe. <laughs> you have to wear safe equestrian gear, mm -hmm. but just cause you do it does not make you any less of a equestrian at all. Mm -hmm. Don't fit a mold whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And say, y'all see me acting a fool. I don't need to act all proper and, oh, the horsey is, he's a shy creature. I'm out here yelling. <laughs> And they're coming up to me and running up to me. You guys don't need to fit. No mold. No mold. That's for cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, had a, I had a question that wasn't on the list and I just lost it, but maybe it'll come back. What does the word equestrian mean to you? Um, wow. I just talked about this with my sister. <laughs> Um, the word equestrian to me, honestly, I don't, even though it's more of like a broad term for anyone who deals with horses, which I think is true. I sometimes just think of it as someone who is just a little bit more, maybe passionate might be the word. Like, you know, you can call you, you can totally call yourself equestrian if all you do is you know, ride horses at your aunties every so often, and you just know how to deal with them you're, when you're riding. Like, I, I can give you that just in more synthetical type reasoning. I love talking. <laughs> I would think that the word equestrian is just that you just happen to know horses on a level that passes just knowing how to ride. It's also knowing just behavioral stuff on the ground, being interested in them and just always being on top of their game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just keeping up with them. That's what I would say. Just keeping up with horses would make you an equestrian. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. <laughs> you have a little bit more. Like, can you? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more invested than just riding, you know, is taking care of them. And yeah, mm -hmm. like you said. Um, so I realized that we didn't get a rundown of all your critters. Oh, <laughs> we know Twilight, yes. uh, but we're going to, we're going to test your brain. We want to hear about them. Nope. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. so you guys, I was like, y'all just want some names and what they are or yeah we just want to know about right, the show i mean we see them like running past like there was like a peacock and then there was like a rooster and it was just like okay. <laughs> i don't know maybe i don't know if it's hers i don't know if she just found it on the road like i don't know where that one came from i don't know <laughs> okay for show for show i can do this this is this is easy so there's um eight horses on the property i have one horse that i'm currently training for my friend um my grandpa owns four. That is Reno, Peanut, Peppy, and Gunner. Those are all the big quarter geldings that are back there. And then I own my main mount, who's Dakari. And she had two sons, Shango and Ducati. Ducati is the really famous one on TikTok right now. <laughs> and I got Twilight. And then um, chicken wise, I mean, Roz is the one that attacked me. His name is Rosengan and Chidori. Uh -huh. They were supposed to be silky chickens, but I know the lady lied to me because they're not silky at all, but they're small, so I'm not complaining too hard. Um, who else is there? Ambrosia Salad is a pea chick, uh, pea fowl that I got as a pea chick. And so she's trained to like hop on my shoulder and all that. She's cool with me. And her little boyfriend, who is a little shy, nasty, that's Sharon Needles. <laughs> and just real quick, they have those names because um, when I got Ambrosia Salad, I watched my first drag movie that night. So they all have drag names. <laughs> they all have drag okay, names. Okay, that makes more sense now. <laughs> I know. People are just like, huh? I know, because when I say their names, we're like, I thought you were talking about the actual Sharon, <laughs> the actual <laughs> Ambrosia no oh no um then who else is there who else is there oh 
Then I have Twix and Snickers. They're um, pygmy goat siblings. I got them when I used to show goats in high school because I used to have them at the farm and one of my goats was just lonely. So we just ended up picking up two little pygmy babies that were like for free. So that was awesome. <laughs> but I think, I think that's everybody who I own, so to speak. Those are, those are all the ones I own. Okay. Okay. It's a good little herd. It's a good little herd. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that we can get out of this whole pandemic situation and you can open up that petting zoo. I'm sure a lot of people will be happy to see someone possibly that looks like them involved in animals and running something, running a business. I have to show it was like there barely stuff like that out here, which is surprising because it's a very aggy community. Mm-hmm. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, um, I'm hoping to change some lives by existing. <laughs> Which you will. The word. Yes. <laughs> yes. Change some lives simply by existing. Mm-hmm. That's it. That is it. All right. Well, it is time for us to get into the derby round. All right. Okay. Answering these questions as quickly as you can. Okay. And the first answer that comes to your brain. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. English or Western? Western. Solids <laughs> or spots? Spots. Bays or grays? Bays. Brown tack or black tack? Never had black tack, so I got to go brown. <laughs> Sponge or curry brush? Curry. Shot or barefoot? Everyone's shod, but I think I like barefoot. Bumper pull or gooseneck? Gooseneck. You know how to pull a horse trailer? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I was like, <laughs> let's just make sure we, okay, cowgirl here, all right? Forget the cows. <laughs> Can you pull a horse trailer, all right? Yeah. Those are the questions. We need answers. <laughs> um, rope halter or nylon halter? Rope halter. Wood fence or electric fence? Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go wood. I'm gonna go wood. That's all right. Okay. What is your favorite piece of barn equipment? I have a. It's not a vaulting or, uh, it's not a vaulting sir single, but like a therapy sir single because I bareback a lot and it makes my grandpa feel better when I'm up in the hills because I bareback in the hills. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So it has like handles. Yeah, it has just one singular like hoop handle so I couldn't do tricks off of it but I can hold on to it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's cool that's cool I never thought about using it for airbagging what's your favorite well I guess that is a piece of tack but outside of that what is your favorite piece of tack oh I got I'm gonna say um oh Dang it. What are they called? The little neck ropes. <laughs> neck ropes. Okay. <laughs> and when was the last time you fell off? What? <laughs> the last time you fell off. Oh, I heard what you said. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I stand on top of jump off and all this other crazy stuff but for some reason I stay on (laughs) I don't know what it is hey I know people say like I need to be challenged more if I don't fall off but I really just be like that's not true that was fun (laughs) (laughs) yeah no that's not true I don't I don't believe that either I didn't fall off my I didn't fall off of a horse until like five years ago like I didn't fall off until same until I was an adult yeah yeah so hey yeah the objective is to stay on (laughs) right right not push the ground exactly by any means necessary even if you're riding on the side (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, that is too funny. Okay. If money was no object, what is one horse related purchase you would make? I, oh, easy. Wait a minute. Everyone's going to get mad at me, but I would buy all the ponies of the world. <laughs> Off rip. I'm going I'm to I'm let you, I'm going to let you be safe. You get to keep that one. <laughs> since, since a lot of majority of people ain't acting right i'm just gonna have to take them all everybody's gonna hang out with me i'm gonna be like a little shepherd i'm gonna have my little cane and i'm gonna walk out right, with all my horses right, in the field <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just can't even imagine the sheer happiness that would come from a herd of minis or a herd of ponies like exactly it's just it just makes my heart it just makes you happy don't it yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. it would be perfect it would be perfect all right is there any parting words you want to leave with the audience anything else that we didn't cover that you want us to know about you where you're going what you want to do anything like that Ooh, what do i want i, I should be inspiration <laughs> really i mean all i can say also be open you know what i mean like do you be who you want to be around all these people don't worry about what you look like what your horse is dressed up as because i'll tell you i get the butt of that a lot i'm always wearing band two knots and my horse rocking the same look <laughs> and get made fun of but I be rocking just do you be open to change but do you I'm gonna say <laughs> I love it yes yes <laughs> okay Lynn do you have any other questions for Desmond you should share the story of how you became viral on TikTok. That story is hilarious. Oh my gosh. Are you talking about the one, like the very recent one? Oh, yeah, sorry. The there's, very recent. There's, there's just multiple times. <laughs> I, got some, okay. I got some millies there, here and there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first, my first foal was Ducati and he was the one that was in the video with me. And I was filming a video that was totally off topic of what I did in there. I was like doing a skit about how my grandpa let a friend borrow my horse for riding, which is totally fine. But he was kind of like, you know, whatever. But anyways, as I was filming, my Ducati just kept getting in the way. And the thing is, he's two years old and he is a little bit pushy and we're working on him with that. That's, it's fine. I'm just kind of letting him be a baby. But every time I was setting up the camera, and this always happens, just for some reason, this one went viral because I think I just retaliated. <laughs> so I just put all the bloopers together. And it's just a video of me interacting with him like I always am, except I'm on camera this time. And I'm like, not hitting him, but I'm like ready to fight him because I do feel that always, every single moment. That's why I say don't fit the mold because just about everybody on TikTok or just on um, horse things in general, it's always like, you know, horse and human bond. This is so beautiful, so graceful, very heartlandish. And then you scroll up and you see me and I'm just trying to like two piece this man, just getting up out of my face, but I love him. <laughs> I really do. But okay. yeah, it just blew up <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> I... I'm not even on TikTok like that, but yeah, you um, you you's got a lot of people on here. A whole lot. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, we need we need you to be making some shmoney off these animals. Oh, we are. Very good. Nice. <laughs> very good. Very hey, my good. pony's teeth. Like, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to have to binge your videos. Tell all of our listeners where we can find you on all the things. All right. So y'all, I am the African princess on Instagram and TikTok. That's the 
H A L F R I C A N Princess. And then I'm also Hafrican Empire on Instagram as well. Those are my animals um, account. And I'm also on YouTube where I just show y'all some horsey things that not a lot of people talk about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Subscribe, follow all these things. Um, I'm about to. Yeah, I'm definitely I need it. You know, what's weird about TikTok is just like you can't back out of it. No. I mean, y'all might have iPhones, so you don't have like back buttons, but like when you hit back on an Android, it's like, do you want to watch this video? But do you want to watch this one before you leave? And it's like, daggone, I just want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to close. Oh, no. And then they're like, nah, stay around. <laughs> they're trying to trap you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. And half the time I'm like, oh. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> I gotta leave I gotta go right right but anyway thank you so much for giving us some of your time today I'm excited to uh share this episode with our people and thank you for tuning in to another episode of young black equestrians head over to our Facebook or Instagram pages and let us know what you thought about that episode Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and have the opportunity to be featured in our next episode.